we are, mate. I'll tell you. There's a lot of water for this whoa, time of year. Whoa. We've taken two swags, a couple of cans of baked beans, some steaks and some beers. I'll tell you what, you don't need much to come up here and have an absolute ball. Oh, that's deep. Yes! Whoa! See ya! Whoa! Drive, drive, drive! Whoa! Listen to it! Oh my God! How good is that? Well, this is a very special occasion, folks, because this marks 10 times to Cape York. Yep. Now, we've been doing this for a while, but never like this before. We've got the farm truck. It's got basically zero mods. Yep. And this right here is Gunshot. The infamous Gunshot, mate. And who's driving down it? Well, this is what makes it even more scary. He's got the keys today. <laughs> He's driving the big farm truck down. Holy I'm heck. as nervous as it comes right now. You are? Mate, there's a high-pitched voice you got going <laughs> on. Are you a bit I'm nervous? Really I'm really, uh, my legs are... <laughs> Can we just do this? Can we right, just do cross it? cross our fingers and hope for the best. Sit down somewhere comfy. Crack a cold beer or something. Do Wait, something. You better get in there, mate. Yeah, let's do this. Cheers, folks. This glorious old 47 Series joined the full drive 24-7 stable as an old wreck that hadn't been driven in almost 20 years. This is yours, mate. Wow. This is what you asked for. With a lot of help from the guys at Mr Land Cruiser, I set about trying to bring this classic 4B back to life. Hey! Is she idle? Like a dream. After just a couple of days out on the tracks, Graham had caught the bug too, and we couldn't think of a better way to celebrate our 10th time to Cape York than to drive it up here. So we fitted a winch, some new splitties, packed the swags, and rattled our way to Australia's most iconic four-wheel drive track, the old telly. We've got no lockers, no power, and no lift. Yep, she's stock as a rock. But I reckon this is gonna be an adventure we'll never forget. We love to get here early in the season, and the Cape has seen a massive wet season this year, with reports coming through of deep crossings and thick mud, and we can't wait to get into it. Oh my goodness gracious me! I'm ordering a feet already! <laughs> First water crossing, done! Telly track 47 series! <laughs> tick, tick! <laughs> <laughs> What is in there? Yeah, you've got you got push, Oh, I left my aircon vents open. Ah, you've got to close your aircon, mate. Right. Now, look, I might have given up the keys to my Isuzu D-Max for this trip, but it still made it to Cape York. Ooh, that is deep. Get a bit of a bow wave going. Yep, Jocko's nabbed the keys and is about to experience the old telly in a whole new level of comfort. Here we go. Here we Next up in the convoy is Tim and Tony the legends behind Mitz Alloy. They'll be wheeling their Schmick 79 series kitted out with the all new Gen 2 canopy. Returning to the Cape with us this year is Bailey from Maverick Campus, towing a newly updated Ranger off-road trailer. Rounding out the convoy is Sam from Spares Box in the big 200 series. And of course, he is loaded up with plenty of spares should he need them. You don't have to wait long on the old telly to get into the action. And just five minutes down the track is one of its biggest challenges, Palm Creek. This committing crossing features both a gnarly entry and equally daunting exit. Luckily, there's a hero full drive ready to take the lead. Far out, here we go. What do I want to I've never been. What do you want to I don't know, mate. That's sort of just be careful yeah, of this. That's the... How good are these brakes? Well, we're about to find out. I know, it's gonna, it's gonna feel pretty good. Wish us luck, folks. It's like gunshot. Oh, no, oh, can we go no. back? Oh, can we no. go back? No, seriously. Oh, no. oh, whoa! Oh, it gets worse! Oh, we're into it! Yes! Yeah, that's the go! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go, yeah. mate! We made it! <laughs> I think. Oh. Can you smell it? Oh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, I got scared too, don't that worry. actually felt pretty gnarly. Oh, that was like gun chop. It's terrifying. Like, imagine what gun chop's gonna look like this oh, year. That was terrifying. That was terrifying. This but that's done, we're done. We're done. Everyone else can now. Get terrified. <sighs> Ooh. All right, next Forby in the slot is Jocko. Let me tell you, I'll be keeping a close eye on his driving. I don't know what's more terrifying, being in the 47 and watching Jocko take my truck on the very first obstacle of the trelly, telly track. I, and he's got to get a better line than that too, because he's going to put gonna, it on his lid. He's got to come over a little bit. Righto, Palm Creek. This is by far the most expensive vehicle I've taken down here. And Graham's watching me as well. Sorry, Graham. That's really Sorry, sweet. mate. Be careful. Watch what you're doing. Oh, a little bit of... Watch me mirrors. 
Don't watch. Turn around. Turn around. What are you doing? You're watching me. I was scared. Oh, sorry, mate. Look at this. Have you broken my mirror? Nah, it's sweet. It is sweet. I just think, I don't know, if you could just watch the track a little more when you're driving. <laughs> See you, mate. There's me canopy. I don't know. That's alright. Tough as. Yeah, very good, good mate. Very good. Yeah, this is all you. Yeah, you wait for about 10 seconds. Right about now. Now there's a lot going through his mind. Oh, he's coming in hot. <laughs> oh. Tim looks like he's accidentally slipped the clutch there, and the big 79 has taken a hit. Your snorkel's having a snooze. A bad day. Oh, no. <laughs> the canopy's fine, though. Canopy's sweet. Well, I thought that was panel, but it's just your snorkel. Oh. oh. No, she's yeah, good. she's sweet. She's good. <laughs> snorkel head, not so much. No. Well, <laughs> we'll fix that. We'll manage to fix that. <laughs> Luckily for Tim, this one looked worse than it is. Palm Creek in the early season is always super steep, and Bailey is going to have his work cut out here to clear the lip with his drawbar. Sure enough, he's gotten just a little hung up. Hung up here. Yeah, it's just that, just that drawbar sort of gets stuck on that edge. But um, that was a good drive, mate. With a little pull, the Ranger is soon unstuck and sailing down into the creek with no damage. It's a tight fit, but he's through. Yeah, good drive, Bailey, mate. That was really good. Thanks, mate. Now, speaking of big rigs, up next is the 200. I'm going to be thinking very, very skinny forward. This is a big old car. I'm a big old bloke and that's a big old hole. Yeah, this is going to be squeezy. Yeah, that's about you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're just going to fit in this one. It's <laughs> it's around about now. Now a little bit, little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, just a tad more. At this point, it's about <laughs> now, I tell you. This is the most terrifying thing you'll ever do. <laughs> Just a passenger at this point. Oh, stop, Sam, stop! Oh, it gets... It gets... Don't, ah, you're right, don't you, you do go. that! <laughs> Here you go. Now it's getting steep. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. A little bit. A little bit of steering, mate. A little oh! bit. A little bit. It's all good. Can you pull the snorkel head off, quick? No, oh, oh, shit, it really is. is. <laughs> nah, it's in the wall. Dig her up. Dig it. Oh. Nah, that's on there. Sam's got no choice but to push through this one. Well. Hope for the best. It's nice and slow, it'll dig it out maybe. You might need to clean your air filter out though. Got a bit of dirt in there now. Oh, oh this is good. It's a, it's a very strong snorkel head. It really is. Well done. Yeah. Well, well done. Well played, mate. Well played. Well, there's a few scars already, but we're all in the creek and now we've got to make our way out the other side. When it comes to Cape York obstacles, this is as hard as it gets. And right now, there looks to be absolutely zero traction. Here we go. We get to the first step. Oh, we're we'll we'll doing well. <laughs> we're we'll doing well. That's going to come back my way, Bill. Give it a drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look oh, 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 here. Oh, 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 <laughs> he got a lot of stuck in his... Oh, not there. That's a that's a nasty spot. Not even him at all. Winch there. wall. Oh, that's Savara Classic. That's a, it is. Nearly, a, nearly caught me a little tiddler. <laughs> well, we didn't exactly fly up that one, but it seems like we've impressed some trackside judges. <laughs> we'll take that. Thank you very much. Come back around. The boys jump into action and soon got us hooked up to a tree in the left bank. This is going to be a long winch, and we'll need a few resets to follow the curve of the climb and keep the farm truck from digging into the bank. I'll tell you what, I'm glad we fitted the rumber before coming up to the Cape, or we'd be in strife. Slippery, huh? Slippery, all right. Oh, yeah, that's a lot slipper than I expected. Right hand down. This is probably the hardest I've seen Palm Creek in all our times up here, and I reckon the entire convoy is going to struggle a bit on this one. But for now, the farm truck has crawled its way to the top. Yes! I'll call that driven. Woo! 
That's, we pretty much drive farm Park creek. It. <laughs> Winch farm creek. We've driven 50% of it. Alrighty, Jocko, you're up, mate. Righto, time for the big D-Max up Palm Creek. Now, it's super slippery, but I want to give it a red hot go. I just don't want to do any damage to the track or the vehicle, so I'm just going to try and get my nose up if I can. Jock's definitely driving with a bit of mechanical sympathy here, and he's feeling his way around that first step up rather than going full send. Go from there, I reckon. You don't want me to get my sister over crack? <laughs> Go get the winch, you old Jerry. <laughs> don't bust the foo-foo valve getting down the hill, big boy. Oh, well, if I have to come in there, I tell you what. You'll break a hip if you come down here. <laughs> Not if I jump through the window on you, I won't. Well, the judges have been a bit harsh on that attempt. That's what you get for not respecting your elders, mate. It's out with the rumba, and to get a better angle on the climb, we're going to use the farm truck as an anchor point. Some of us at least are working hard. This is nice, I've got the aircon on. The boys are working hard outside, I might just wind this up. A couple of people have said today, you're looking a bit tired, and I say, well, you're working as hard as I am to get jocked through this track. Anyone would be tired. No, not true. It's actually, that's a lot gnarlier than I've seen it before, so we've done well just to get the cars across here, I think. I don't know, we're cut out for us for some of the bigger cars because there's quite a steep exit out of here. Big winch, but we'll give it a go. We've almost got the D-Max to the top, but there's one more problem. Come on, get traction. The wheel ruts at the top have diffed out the car, but we've got one more trick up our sleeve, and that's a few well-placed Max tracks. Oh, yes. Oh, that's all me. Yeah. Straight up. Must be nice. Thanks, boys. Okay, time for the next contender, the big Mitz truck. That's it. Give it a little bit. Up she goes. Come on, girl. Go, 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 go. Someone wants to get up there. That V8 sure sounds impressive. But Tim has gotten stuck at the same spot as the last two vehicles. Climb my bum. Come on, girl. That'll be up. Oh, we got a scorecard. What was it? Oh, six. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Runvers are getting a real workout today, and just like the D-Max, the 79 is caught out in those top ruts. And so it's rinse and repeat with the Max tracks. Yep. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Hey. Well done, Timbo. Who's next, eh? Six. <laughs> All right, let's give this a go. Bailey's rig is suddenly looking a lot bigger in this narrow channel. And we'll be happy here if he can get his nose up that first step to give a clean winch angle. That'll do ya. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> and he's done just that. Well played, mate. Well played. Can't impress some people though. <laughs> that is another tough score. Now, this is the definition of a big winch. A little bit of drive, Bailey, just a little bit. But with a few winch repositions and a well-placed anchor in the 79, both the car and the trailer cruise to the top. That's four for four so far in this challenge, and that leaves just one contender to try and make it to the top. Sam's got twin lockers, 35s, and power on tap. So, I reckon he's in with a good crack. Unbelievable. I really don't want to bounce that front. I need to pop up, really. I think it's just too wet. Would you look at that? Palm Creek is taking no prisoners this year. Well, gave it a red hot shot. I thought he. Yes! Yes! Throw stuff at him! Yeah! 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 He's going to be angry when he gets up here. I suggest we all get out of the way. Which one of you threw stuff at me? Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. <laughs> These guys on the side. Probably. I wouldn't do that. Don't come at me! Here's a pro tip, folks. If you're going to prank a mate, don't be the one who has to disengage the free spool afterwards. <laughs> Sucked in, Graham. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Well, I've probably had that coming, but with the hijinks out of the way, Sam is soon hooked up and winching for the top. With Palm Creek almost done, the old tally is well and truly underway. Yeah, boy. Woo! We're up, Mate. and we're up. Mate, this is quite a little entry. It really is. And you know what? The farm truck has held its own so far, mate. How good was Palm this year? Oh, yeah, what a doozy. Pretty wild. No Nobody one will... drove it. And this is the thing, we had a 200 series on 35 twin lock and it made it just as far as the a farm standard truck. farm truck. <laughs> so if you're wondering if your stock standard vehicle can do Cape York. Oh, get in it right now and drive up here. That's what I reckon. Now, this, this is freak. notoriously quite deep, bro. I think so. I'm, I'm going to close my air conditioning. Here, actually. Oh, I should have closed my air con. Oh, it still comes in. It still comes in. Yeah, it's coming it in all right. Yeah, what a little great crossing. <laughs> I'm floating. I've got all, everything floating. Look at that, guys. Everything is dripping. Everything's <laughs> wet. You can't do the cape without getting your feet wet. But that's all just part of the adventure of the old telly. And all the boys are having a blast. This truck has been wheeling harder tracks when I was a baby, sucking on my mum's teeth, mate. This thing was driving Cape York. Yes! Here you go, Mrs. Well, by the way. The convoy is soon flexing its way towards the next challenge, but none of us were prepared for what happens next. Oi, boys! Fire! You want to open? Just smash it, Smash it. Smash it. Left quarter, left quarter. That's heavy. But we just uh, pulled up after doing a challenge down here. We were just chilling, we were just talking. The entire back of the canopy just went boof up in flames. You're right. Heavy, heavy, very heavy. As the smoke clears, the problem becomes obvious. Bailey's auxiliary battery system is shorted out and set the canopy on fire. We quickly isolate the battery from the starter and disconnect it from the system. A smashed rear window might look bad, but this could have been a whole lot worse if we hadn't been able to jump on the fire so quickly. Far out, mate. Um, that was pretty hectic. You've got to keep on your toes. We were literally minutes from losing this vehicle. The negatives become a positively charged wire, I believe. It stripped back all the sheath on that wire um, and started basically just arcing out and anything near it just catching yeah. on fire. I suppose, you know, it really reinforces why you need good 12 volt in the vehicle. You know, you get the 12 volt right, right and um, look, it might be right on this vehicle as well, but you can do a few corrugations, things move around, yeah. and that's, you know, you, all you need is a little cut in a positive wire and it starts to earth out into the body of the vehicle, yeah. and that's what can happen. It's one of those things as, as well, it's like, oh, it won't happen to me, it won't happen to me, but it happens to everyone, it's, so you gotta be careful. This is only the second time in my four wheel drive career that I've had to use a fire extinguisher on a car. Really? Mm. Wow. So that's pretty full on. Well, what do you reckon? Should we clean up some of this glass and head to camp? Well, I think that's the plan, mate. Let's go get a cold beer and sit around a fire. Well, I think Bailey needs one as well. <laughs> <laughs> One lucky thing to have, Graham installed one of these Cap Industries brackets on the floor of the passenger footwell here um, for the fire extinguisher and it meant because this door was even open when we were just standing around, I was able to grab it real quick and run straight over just with a little quick release and it's nice and accessible so lucky we had it. The team at Maverick actually had this 12 volt system installed by a qualified third party but I reckon they might be doing the next 12 volt build in house. There's nothing quite like Cape York camping. With plenty of rivers to park up and perfect balmy conditions, we've soon nabbed a secluded little spot along Bertie Creek and got camp springing up. Jocks living the good life in the D-Max, but for some of us, today's camp setup is just a little more basic. Well, day one on the tally, the farm truck, Sean and I, we're doing pretty basic this trip. We've really only got a couple of swags. We've got uh, no long range tanks, nothing. There's 
Jerry's up the back here. We've got water in here as well. We've got the tools, food in here. I guess it goes to show you can do the telly with relatively, well, very stock vehicles. Now, we've had to winch once or twice. Of course you do. I think you'd have to do that in just about any vehicle, but we're getting the job done in a 40-year-old vehicle, and I'm loving every minute of it. Now, the Maverick truck might be a little battered, but the camper is looking schmick, and Bailey's nabbed himself a perfect spot down by the water. Now that is living right there. And with that, our first day on the tally is almost done and dusted. It's time to get a fire cranking, chuck a few steaks on the barbie plate and crack a cold one or two. <laughs> We've had the time of our lives in the old 47, but tomorrow things get serious, because up next is Gunshot Creek. Well guys, I hope you're enjoying our Cape York adventure. I've got to say, after 10 years of going up to Cape York, this is without a doubt the most fun I've ever had on a four wheel drive trip. To do it in a good old truck like this and with a good old mate as well, it doesn't get much better than that. I thought I'd just stop the show for just a quick second to give a special announcement, to give you guys the heads up that Snatch Clothing is about to take stock of a bunch of premium new flannelette shirts. Now, flannos, us Aussies know them as flannos. You guys overseas might not know exactly what they are. These are checkered shirts. Uh, we in Australia call these very formal attire. So they're perfect around a campfire. Um, you know, when the beers are flowing, you are wearing this, sitting back by a fire. It doesn't get much better. You can wear it at a pub at a mate's wedding. It doesn't really matter because this will cover you for just about every single base off-road. Our camo hoodies hardly need explaining as well. These have been out of stock for a while now. Um, we've, got, we've got the camo colored ones as well as the black camo. Now, they're available for pre-order right now on the Snatch Clothing website. Now, I wanted to give you guys a heads up so you don't miss out. These are really popular and they do sell really fast as well. So, if you pre-order one of the new flannies, including this new color here, or one of the camo hoodies, we're gonna chuck in a free stubby holder. So, jump on to snatchclothing.com.au so you don't miss out. This right here is just about as good as camping gets as we wake to another perfect day in Cape York. With Gunshot Creek just a few clicks north of us up the track and the possibility of smashing some flares on the wide 200, Sam is getting ahead of the curve and actually removing them. That's good thinking, mate. When you're traveling this far off the grid, it's nice to be well set up. And there's some impressive camp setups in this convoy. Life in the 47, well, it's a bit more basic, but there's still a few key mods on the farm truck that are keeping us running comfortably. I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of some of the basic mods I've got on this vehicle. Now, you've got to keep in mind that I've built this vehicle on a budget, and also I've got the bare essential mods that I think are needed for a trip like Cape York. Now, when it comes to the 12 volt system in the back here, what I've actually done is I've used the old Red Arc system that was in the original Dirty 30. So this is 10 plus years old. We'll put on a new bit of um, board so it fits in the back of the 40 here, but everything used to be in the original Dirty 30. So this system's actually done quite a few trips to Cape York. It's got it under its belt anyway. Very basic, but it works an absolute treat. And I suppose if I was to give you a tip when it comes to buying accessories for your vehicle, is some products are worth buying once and buying right and spending a little bit extra money. Things like 12 volt gear that you wanna keep forever. You know, I've got a GME radio in here as well. This is from the original Dirty 30. Again, that thing has probably been flooded and upside down more times than it hasn't been, and yet it still works a treat in the 40 series here. So if you buy once, buy right, get some high quality gear, especially when it comes to anything 12 volt, it'll last ages. With Brecky on board, it's time to pack up camp and make tracks towards the biggest challenge of the old telly. And so it seems kind of fitting that today, of all days, Sean's decided to hand me the keys to the 47. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit nervous too, mate. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. First time behind the 47. It's a bit daunting. It, it is, especially your lead vehicle. Yep, You've got a vehicle. stock standard vehicle from the early 80s. You're not making me feel a great deal better about this. I oh, know, mate. At least it's something that you would be more yeah, familiar yeah, yeah, with. Yeah, this, this is, is 
You would have been about, you know, a 40 year old man when this came out. Like, it's 35, <laughs> mate. It's 35, come on. <laughs> Alright, watch me stall it straight up. How embarrassing. Easy on the clutch, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. don't ride it. Alright, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're out of here. Jeepers, you've got to drive it. You've got to be quite strong to do a tight turn in this one. <laughs> you've got to have a bit of go oh, about yourself. Birdie Creek offers great camping at a number of spots, but the crossing itself needs a little care, with some big holes that can catch you out at the crossing. Here we go, mate. I'm going to do a swift in a second here. Yeah, you'll have to. Just step on it. That's... Oh, yeah. Farm truck life. All right. Farm truck life. Where are you? You're in a campground. You're in a campground now, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, that's all right. Soon enough, we're all through and the real challenge is just up ahead. It's a challenge that has an almost mythical status for Aussie four-wheel drivers and every year, hundreds of us adventurers put their Forbies up against it. Yep, this is Gunshot Creek and it's an absolute doozy. Here we are, mate, Gunshot. Yep. <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, I know you're a bit of a strategist when it comes to life. You like to navigate your way around life quite well. And I noticed that up until a certain point, you've been very adamant about who drives a 47. No crew, nobody else. Mm. Then suddenly, I've got the key today. I'll let you have a steer, because I thought today we'd be going the bypass. And, uh, well, what are you thinking, mate? I'm going to do it. What, what, you're going to go the bypass? I'm going to drive the 47 down gunshot. I'm going to drive Shauno's Pride and Joy 47. He loves it more than the 200 down gunshot. <laughs> with you as my passenger. You see, there's two things wrong with this. Firstly, <laughs> <Only two. laughs> firstly there's my pride and joy, that yes, 47. That's... I love it so much, that truck. Yep. Number two is I don't think I've ever been a passenger off-road, let alone down gunshot, mate. Yeah, you're not going to be happy about this. <laughs> right, this, eh? this is going to be spectacular. Oh, mate, oh, look, if oh. you're confident, Oh, I'm not, I'm not even remotely confident. Well, don't say that to me. I've got no confidence <laughs> at all. I'm basically just going to try and fall down that into yeah, here and yeah. then come out. No, I think we'll do it. That'd be fine. I think we'll do it. I, I think we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a go. 47, down gunshot. Are you sure about this? Nope. Things can go pear-shaped pretty quickly at gunshot, so preparation is key. We've got the camera car parked at the bottom to act as a quick recovery vehicle. Plus, we're taking a few more precautions. What I'm doing here is I'm very conscious of the fact that when I get to the bottom, there's going to be a lot of mud come up through this grill. I don't want to fill the radiator full of mud, so it's got a little bag that holds actually our um, um, little barbie plate, and that, that's going to fit down there nicely. So it'll basically go yeah. into the grill and not into the radiator. That is perfect, mate. That's perfect. A little radiator protector. Now, the other thing we've done, of course, is to get the run of it pre-spooled. So basically, when we get down to the bottom, if this front is all full of mud, which I suspect it will, you'll still easily be able to grab that winch rope. Now, I might even grab that and put it inside the car and actually hold that as the passenger. So if something goes wrong, you're going to be right. Just getting in here, Stricky, mate. Got the winch rope. Oh, man. Uh, how are you feeling? Yep. How often have you given the keys to your pride and joy to someone else to drive probably the hardest obstacle in Australia? Mate, I'm not going to sound weird or anything, but no. there's one bloke I do trust. Oh. It is you. Um, Thanks, mate. I've got to say, and I'm trying yep. to give you a little bit of confidence. Thanks, for me, I need that. For me more than anything. Well, Thurman and Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Alright, nice and slow. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first bit sucks. Yep, sweet, <laughs> mate. Coming on that, mate. It's hard to ride that down on one. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got a couple of Wish us luck, mate. Right, no, <laughs> kid, yeah, the kids are holding each other. I don't like this. Oh, uh, what do I hold? I don't know what you hold. That's I'm it, gonna hold comes. just like this. How are you feeling, mate? Um, yeah, good. Really good. It's it to get really weird. Yeah, really weird. Oh, that's full brakes. Yes! Oh, oh you nearly drive it, too. Drive it! We nearly did it. Woo! Mate. Yes! yes. yes. Gunshot the 47. Pretty bloody loose. Woo! Oh. Hang up, engine. Oh, it's, it's a precision crack, same, man. Look at this, look at this. We've got the best in the business. 47 engine. Ready? Yep. Nice we were so close. How's that trailer? Not much I can do. Oh, oh, that's it's a train, it's a train. I call that driven! Gunshot driven! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! Holy hell, it stinks in the end. 
Wow, that's crazy! Oh, that's good <laughs> yes. yes! That is all time. How good is that? A stock four-wheel drive down gunshot. But next, it's my own pride and joy on the line, and I reckon I'm going to ride shotgun for this one so I can keep an eye on young Jocko. Well, hey, Jocko. How are you feeling up there, mate? Mate, I'm good to go. Graham's excited. I can see Yay! him shaking. His legs are shaking. <laughs> it's all happening in here. You show you like a leaf, mate. Look, do your best. I think you got a good line up here. You'll, um, you should drop into this. You might even drive it, I reckon. I'll, yeah. I wouldn't put it past you. Yep. We'll see what happens, mate. Let's uh, let's give it a go, eh? Right. Ready? Good luck, my friend. Good luck. <laughs> I just want to say yep. thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. I just start I going down here straight now a little bit. Oh. Right, back over here. Yep. That's not it. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh yeah, there we go. Let's do it, Graham. Oh, oh. 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 drive it. Drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it. Oh, oh. you bad anchor. Getting into gunshot is one thing, but getting out is often worse. Oh, my heart. Nothing you can do, it pushes you over that way. No! Oh, 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 oh. I think you didn't hit a thing then. You've done exceptionally well. There we go. Gunshot in the D-Max, well mate. Well done, Jocko. How good. <laughs> that was sick. Uh, how's the canopy look? I can't see from here. Mate, it looks fine. Yeah. You didn't touch it? No, you just took a little bit of a rub on it. Just on the tray or the canopy? Nah, the, on the head bow there, none oh, of the canopy's touched. Zero really. issue, zero issue. Nah, it looks sweet, it looks so great. What's, what are your thoughts? I'm packing it. I'm yeah, really it's the first time. Tight. Well, yeah, first freckles time. tight, I was about to say that, mate. <laughs> I think you'll be fine. You'll be yeah, right. Well, you're you're same width gotta, in the back. I know, you just got to fall in. Same yeah. width as my car, just taller. Yeah. Tall doesn't matter. Tall doesn't matter. Lighter. But you got yeah. a lot of weight up the back of those twin spares, you'll be right. You'll be fine. Yeah. All right, Timmy. All right, mate. Here we go. Gunshot. I am very nervous. I'm going to be honest. This like... is like a freckle clencher. <laughs> All right, here we go. Timbo's first time up the Cape. Big fella's decided he's going to step up to the plate. And he's going to tackle gunshot. First time up the Cape. First time on the tally. First time doing gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking a little bit nervous. Rightly so. You good to go, mate? Yeah, I'm good. We're good. We're Two good. thumbs good. up, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, mate. <laughs> right, mate. Looking pretty good. Come on board when you're ready. Start that one. All in your hands, big boy. <laughs> Oh right again. Yep. Okay, front wheels are just approaching. Nice and slow. Front wheels are just Lean approaching. Up, that way. Touch your right, mate. Front, uh, just about to go Touch over the lip. Right. Yep, that's it. That's it, just hold on to that. Stay on that line, starting to come down. Good luck. Here we go. You're about to, you're about to go on the roller coaster yeah. ride. Yes! <laughs> that's it, mate, that's it. Here it goes. Nice. Oh. See ya! Now it takes some big kahunas to take your rig down gunshot, but doing it with a camper, <laughs> well that's next level. So we've got a few 12 volt niggles going on with this vehicle right here, so we're not 100% confident the winch is going to work. Now, you want to be 100% confident the winch is going to work when you're in a situation like this. So what we're going to do right now is just hook up this kinetic rope here and just drag him out if we need to. You don't want to be mucking around when you're down there on that angle. Engines don't like it, so this is nice and quick and easy. All hooked up, ready to rock and roll. All right, Bailey, you'll creep forward, mate. A little bit of right hand down. How's that looking? That's it, that's it. Straight in the back out. Straight in the back out. Yep. Now, I don't have a lot of brakes, so this is... You don't, you're not going to You are right, mate. You don't need too much brakes. You just slide down. You're about to... Uh, the front's got 30 centimetres. coming down. 20 centimetres. 20. 10. I'm glad you can count, because I'm still uh, nervous. Yeah, you're about to feel it. Come <laughs> on, right, mate. Couple don't centimetres. Couple centimetres. See ya. See ya, mate. Whoa. Your front wheels are off the ground. Whoa! Wowzers! That's going to take quite the shove. Oof, I tell you, that's nasty. The camper is nearly on the side of the bank at the top of gunshot. 
Holy yeah, just go heck. gentle, gentle. Yeah, one more of those. One yeah, more of those. One of those. Holy heck. That was, I thought the trailer, Dude. it was vertical at one no, point. That was a jaffle at one point. Yeah, yeah, it was a jaffle. We just had to put some cheese on his yeah, roof and we're good spaghetti. to go. Holy heck. Oh, well, man. you wanted R&D. Yep. Now we're going to go check the trailer. Yeah. The trailer will be fine. The trailer's made it out of this better than the vehicle has, there's no doubt about that. Sure enough, Bailey's Forby has added a few more battle scars to the list. But the Maverick camper has come out golden with nothing more than a few cosmetic scratches. That is pretty darn impressive and a testament to a solid build. Last man at the top is Sam in the big spares box rig. It's just a very wide car and I'm a wide boy and this is a narrow little <laughs> situation. Now, we've never actually seen a 200 make it down gunshot, so this is anyone's guess. That's good, mate. As Sam inches closer to the edge, that rig is looking pretty darn wide. Yep. Yep. Hold it, that's you. That's the hole. You're taking up the hole width, mate. Man, he's very wide in there. That's it. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's your best line. The only line, really. That's what I was going to say. What other <laughs> one have you got? Yeah. <laughs> There is not an inch to spare here, and if this goes wrong, it's goodbye panels. So Sam has taken it very, well, very slowly. That's dig it, that's dig it, that's dig it. That's it, drive it, drive it, drive it. Oh. Yeah, big boy. Oh, Woo. put it there, brother. Right, I, uh, every emotion possible up the top of that hill so, happened. So yeah. did we. We didn't think you'd fit, and as you're coming down, you you were that wide that you actually didn't have your fronts on the ground almost. So <laughs> we're actually driving down the bank. Yeah, right. That probably it, helped, if anything. Mate, it was absolutely oh, well, like it was precisely come down. It just went straight down, and then you just drove out of it like a boss. Just want to cry, but I also wee myself a little bit. But I've, you're spotting. I've, ne I've never seen a 200 do gunshot. I've actually always told them to go back because yeah. they just so wide, mate. Outstanding. Big dick 200 series. Gunshot, glad mate. It. Glad we did it. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Well done, Sambo. That was an impressive drive. And with that, the whole convoy has conquered gunshot. I tell you, that feels pretty good. The trailer come down. That was um, it was wild. We we're just discussing um, your drive down gunshot. We we're just making the comment, mate. A lot of inferior trailers actually bend on the chassis or the drawbar. That's usually what lets them down, mate. We just wanted to know what you guys have done to actually improve the strength. It's obviously quite a strong little rig. Yeah, for sure, mate. So we've gone with a one-piece chassis. It's 100 by 50 by four, and it's braced in all those spots that need it. Obviously, it's one piece is going to make it a heck of a lot stronger. Do you give any sort of warranty or anything like that? Because um, I think it's peace of mind for a lot of people in the camper trailer market that, you know, they've got a warranty to boot when they buy a camper trailer, especially on the structural stuff. Yeah, for sure, mate. Well, after last trip, we uh, used to have a five-year structural warranty, but since then, we've actually now upped that to a lifetime warranty on the chassis and the rubber. Yeah, wow. Well, five years, mate, I'd be stoked with that. But lifetime, it obviously means that you guys pretty confident in what you build. Yeah, for sure, mate. There's no way better to stand by your product. Next up is Cockatoo Creek, a deep and fast flowing crossing where crocs are known to hang out. You got this? Yeah, mate. And strong arm steering left. Yep, yep, yep. There are a few different line choices here, but the main trick is to go carefully to avoid getting caught out on some big diff bangers.
It's getting to that time of day where the best camp is the one closest to you. And right on Beer O'Clock, we've come up with a spot that'll do us just nicely. Now, we've got a few maintenance items to take care of on the old farm truck, but no sooner have we opened the bonnet before half the rest of the convoy seems to also be cracking into repairs. Just doing a few maintenance bits and pieces here while the boys are working on the other rigs, and I notice we've lost a fan blade down here. Now, we don't want to do any more of that, and I suspect we've done it in one of the deeper water crossings. What we're lucky hasn't happened is that this piece here hasn't sheared off and gone through the radiator. Now tomorrow we've got some really deep water crossings, I'm talking stuff like this, and we don't want to do any more damage down here, so I'm not going to get into it right now, but tomorrow before we hit some of the bigger crossings, I'll show you a little trick that you can do on vehicles like this that'll prevent you doing any damage to your fan and any damage to your radiator. For now, I'm going to give that to Sean over. He can wear it around his neck like a little amulet. Luckily for Sam, his repairs just involve swapping over a tyre due to a leaking bead. But over at the Mitz truck, things are a bit more serious. The boys have heard a noise coming from the calipers on the way into camp. And sure enough, the brake pads are nearly worn down to the bone. The problem is we don't have any spare pads on hand. And with braided lines in the 79, crimping them is going to be virtually impossible. Tim is not going to make it up the rest of the track safely with no brakes. So the boys have got a bit of a bush mechanic fix on their hands. But that can wait until after we've set up camp. The Ranger camper might have been airborne today, but it still sets up like a charm. And in literally a minute, Bailey's got the main annex up and ready for the night. Faster than we can even get our swags untangled from the back of the 47. There you go, she's a bit old, but she does a trick. Now, this whole setup, I've got lots of parts from the Dirty 30. Basically, everything that we've fitted this vehicle is pretty much budget. It's come from my shed or another build that I've had, including my old swags, my very first original swag, Got on a stretcher for a bit of comfort, those drifter stretches, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is not the most comfortable swag getting around, especially the mattress, but you put it up off the ground and heck, it's one of the most comfortable night sleep you'll have out in the bush. Doesn't quite let the mosquitoes in, which is good, but other than that, this is a camp fit for a king. A little tip for you folks, trips like this, I've got myself a ground mat here, and what I've done is I've rolled my ground mat with my swag. And that way, when I get into camp, I've already got a ground sheet down. And now all I need to do, this is pretty cool, I just unroll my swag, and she's on the ground mat, ready to rock and roll. And the ground sheet acts as a bag for the swag, stops the dust getting in, stops it getting wet. But of course, at the same time, gives me a bit of a, a bit of stuff on the ground, just to keep me up off those rocks, keep everything clean and tidy. And in the morning, you just roll everything up together, and you're good to go. We've soon got the fire cranking and a few iron jacks on the go as we warm up for a cook-up that I guarantee is going to be one of the most controversial we've ever undertaken. Back at the Mitz truck, Jock and Tim are making some headway on the repair, although the solution is a little drastic. Mucking with your brakes is not something we recommend you undertake lightly, but we've got an experienced crew here and they've really thought through things pretty carefully. Righto, update. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we've gone full Shock Customs. We have, yeah. Shock Customs has come in here and taken over. Shock Customs Overlord. So what we're doing now is we're just going to crimp that braided line with everything we have. So we've basically compressed it down enough that we can crimp it. It's not going to be as effective as a proper crimp on a rubber line, but it'll limit the amount of fluid and pressure that goes through that line. And we're also going to uh, secure the piston out of the way so it can't come out and hit the back of the rotor. Still a little worm drive from further up in the car and away yep. we go. Yeah, yep. just a hose clamp or something like that. So that's where we're at, but uh, what we'll do is, I reckon first thing tomorrow, Sambo can get on the sat phone and put in a spares box order Absolutely. for a new brake line, yeah, rotors yeah. and pads, and probably get them sent up here pretty quick, I reckon. So, yeah, yeah. Righto, well, let's crimp that line off and get it back together. Taking the hose clamp off the snorkel on the D-Max, we're going to use this to hold the piston in place on the caliper on Tim 79. How good? Well, we're getting pretty serious. So what we've done is we've actually tried to stop off or block off the um, line inside the banjo here with a little bit of alfoil. And uh, we've also got crimped the line and we're also holding the piston back. So 
I'd be very surprised if there's any fluid that comes through here. With that, the 79 is almost back on its feet and we'll live to see another day on the old telly. That just leaves dinner. Well, it could start arguments. Mate, Cape York, in the farm truck. I mean, it doesn't get much more rustic than that. It really doesn't. <laughs> How's your back, mate? Is going all right? That's good, I'm good, I'm feeling and good. Look, your go-to meal, I'm talking to you guys here. Mm -hmm. Your go-to meal when you're at the camp, yep. what are you gonna cook? Steak. Bingo. 100%. Bingo. Everyone has a way of cooking a steak, and I'll mm -hmm. guarantee this will divide more people than just about anything we've ever done before on this Brothers show. become enemies. <laughs> I reckon so. This will cause fights amongst yep. the camp group. Yep. But tonight, we're cooking five different methods of cooking a steak. It's going to be we're, rigorous. We're basically not going to show the rest of the crew no. what we're doing. We're going to do a taste test, and for yep. once and for all, we're going to settle. This is we're, it. We're going to settle it. So no matter what you think tonight, we're ending, the, we're ending it. There's no more arguments. No, this is the way to cook a steak. This is, this is the way We've to cook a steak. We've got five ways we're going to show you, and I yep. guarantee you're probably thinking five different ways. There's only one How way to cook a steak. Five ways There's only there one is. way. Yep. I'll show you. We need steaks. Choco! <laughs> right on, mate. Actually, I might get the boys a couple of beers. Yeah. Here he is. Steaks. Ooh, Guess thank what? you very Ooh, much, uh, mate. A treat. What, what do you got, got mate? Yum. Yum. Look at Yum. you go, mate. Oh, oh, you, well. yeah, you were a little, little, little bit. I tell you what, Jeez, I apologise to. <laughs> oh, mate. Come on, mate. You can test the authenticity of a man by the way he opens a bottle. What? Do you and mean? Uh, <laughs> cheers, mate. Cheers, guys. <laughs> all right, let's get stuck into this, mate. All right, all right you boys do that. I'm going to jump back on the tools. So Good on you, man. How's it all going? You yeah, fair call, yeah, mate. Yeah, pretty much done, I think. But looking Ooh, good. Look at this. All this right, is how you do it. Cheers, bro. The first way is going to be the old, the old way, which I reckon is the old flip once. Wait till the blood comes through the meat. When that flips, turn him over. And then I, I don't, I don't personally, hang on, hang I on, don't mate. believe that's the way to do the it. The jury will be out in a sec. I know. Okay, it's I all know. up to you right Number now. Number two. Number two, I'm going to call this one the dirty steak. The key, the key is with this one is it goes. You season it the same way as the other, <coughs> but you don't need a frying pan. This goes straight in the coals. There you go, brownie, by the way. And you turn that over on the coals. Yep. Third way. Now this is the way you'll do it at home, no doubt. You cook okay. it on gas, right? But we've got a, a beautiful kitchen set up. We really us. do. Look have at this. Yeah. Have a go at this, eh? Hey? Look at this. I, look at this. It's, I'm like, <laughs> I can be a, a rock star up it's here. It's actually hard to believe Just. that this camper was airborne coming down gunshot today. And look, here we are. There's. I'm gonna. Can I take a thing? Can I take some cushions out here? You shouldn't. There's. Look at that. Zero mud. There's zero mud, and it's just been down gunshot today. Yep, 100%. absolutely unbelievable. So this one's going to cook on the gas. Is okay. basically what I'm talking about. Yep. I, I actually don't mind this method, but you know, I like cooking on the gas. Mm -hmm. The next way. The next way. Now this is the multiple flip way. The second it goes down in a hot pan, we're going to flip this Straight multiple away, times. Multiple now times. imagine don't you get stop. exactly right. Just you flip it like it's just You're flipping just a fair bit of meat there. I mean, <laughs> that's a, that's a lot of moving of meat, but stop. But that's, just. that is the key though sometimes. Oh, and I look, get excited. So that that is that is the fourth up. way. Yep. And the fifth way, I'm going to call this one the dirty Harry. Yeah. So what you need to do with this one. Is, this is controversial. It's weird. Right. It's weird. It's, we it's, only just realised this a little while ago. In the Kimberley, we actually yeah. learned about this one. So this is a new one for us as well. But you you wrap it in foil with all your all your seasoning and all the rest of it, and you put that on the frying pan yep. or the the, the, the really fire. Matter, it doesn't really matter because it's in foil on the coals. Yep. And you cook it in the in the foil. There's a couple of commons in this in this recipe. Yeah. Which which Across basically the board. steaks need to basically relax. You put it put it yourself. You just been in the fridge. You're all up tight. <laughs> you need to get out of there and just go. This has been in the 47, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, mate. That's ridiculous. Let me get you a better one. The 40, this 47's been underwater. Of course, my salt's wet. Has he got any? Oh, he's got heaps of stuff. Dude, steak seasoning, pepper. Pantry. He's got salt. Pantry. It's not wet. The salt is perfectly dry. I don't need to That's boot that That's what you need. That's what you need. Look, these steaks are going to taste good no matter what you yep, do with them. Because look, these are from an Aussie butcher. And I, I guarantee, that. I guarantee, folks, if you're wanting to impress, go to a proper butcher. Mm. I mean... It's yep. not that much more, and the steaks are so much, so much better, better, and so you're much usually better. supporting local, you know what I mean? Great. I yep. like that action you've got. I know. You can see that wrist has had a bit of a bit of practice. Not the first time you've shaken things over a steak before, but yeah. There we go. You don't even have to skip a beat. If you've got a good mate who's on oh, your side. No big deal. Just don't touch swords. Mate, just going to flip those over. You've yep. seasoned those well. Important to do both sides, mate. Now, key is when you get a good piece of meat in the middle, you just want to always yep. make sure you give it 
Delicate treatment from both sides. I agree. Now, this is what exactly what I'm about to do. Same deal again. Now that is salted and peppered. Yeah, that's actually quite good. And that is ready to go. If you can get the one on the camper trailer going. I've got this. I've got this. <laughs> I'm going to take this All down. Right. Give, me, give me a steak. Which one do we put on, the, on there? That one. That one? Yeah, Done. That Excuse that fingers. One. Here we go. Thank Forward. you very much. All right. Don't worry about the Take diesel. the rest of the fire. Thank you. First up, we've got our gas cook steak pan. While the foil wrapped Dirty Harry goes in the hot plate. One flip wonder. Gone on. Long pull flip. Then you better get ready. Then it's dirty steak yeah, on man. some fresh coals. Yeah. We're going medium rare for all our steaks yeah. and soon the single flip gets a turn along with the Dirty Harry. Now to score this one, we're gonna do a blind taste test with a few of the boys and get them to rank each one as they taste it. Then we'll collate the scores yeah, and see where we land. Here's the one flipper. Right Call the boys in. Call the boys this. in. Look at that. That's a good right. play. Let's go for this one first. Go for nice this one too. first. Yep. Ooh. 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 Now this one here. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's not bad. Out of ten, boys. Five off. No. Easy to do. Uh, not too tough. It's nice. Beautiful it's steak still. Kind mm. of a little bit of a weird aftertaste. I agree. Mm. Right. Score though. Oh, out, out of ten. ten. Maybe like six or seven. Still. Like six eight. or seven. Yeah, I like right it. it. Yeah, I'm running a six. Six. Want to go five? I'm going to go five. All right, next one here. Let's go, this, let's go one of these ones. Mm, yum. Look at this thing. Oh. Mm. Mm. That's got more flavour. Mm. So good. Mm -hmm. Next one. That is so good, that one. Mm. I really don't know what they are. Just trying to pick them. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's juicy. Mm -hmm. Hasn't got the same flavour, though. No. Mm. You're right. It hasn't got the same flavour. on the last one. But right, you, last. This one here. Second last. Lovely big piece of meat. This Give one. Me this one. That one. Mm. Oh, that is, <laughs> that is sick. <laughs> oh. mm. Holy heck. <laughs> Holy heck. i actually forgotten what's what. Mm. But that. Oh. That one. Okay, middle one. Middle one, boys. Jump, jump a piece here. That's good. Five. Five. Mm. Six. Six. Yeah, six. Well, right, folks, the results are in, and we've had a, a nice little feed, and we've got more to go, which is even more special about this whole thing. <laughs> a lot of steak on a plate is yeah, always a good thing. It is. Yep. Now, folks, without doubt, and this is a bit of controversy as well, the one flip is the win. Yeah, I didn't that, think that, I'd say it either. Ev everybody nah. just, to be honest, with the multiple flip, I think was a win. Nah. No. What? No. Nah. No. Nah. I'm. I, I think the dirty flip. Dirty on the on dirty, the coals. Dirty guys, guys, guys. There was, the was, the was, was sandy. The there was sandy my piece. Yeah, you're okay. A bit, yeah. You guys have had too many iron jacks. I think. Okay, your head's not thinking right. The the single flip. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I did no. like a little bit of. No. It was great, it wasn't it? How good was it? Reminded me no. of my granddad. How good was it? Cook stuff. Exactly. Was, yeah. Exactly. The gas cooker, unfortunately, didn't quite make the cut because anything over a fire, let's face it, it's going to be better. Yeah, be better. better. Yep. The worst one we can probably all guarantee is oh, yeah. the Dirty Harry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Harry, you're a legend, but sorry. There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. We can't actually make our mind up between oh, us all. We're, we're best mates, we're arguing. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was talking about. <laughs> this we is got all... up here, you like, have a bit of steak, and all we've done is argue the whole time. And divided the camp so I can not believe. So what I want to know, guys, in the comments, please, let us know the way you, you prefer steak. your steak. Yep, yep. Simple as that. Now, I want to know medium rare grade. What sort of timber you yeah. use? I don't care, but let us know the way you cook it. That's the key. <laughs> I actually just got a big bit of grit. <laughs> 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 I've got a, I need oh, a beer. Oh, dirty steak that keeps biting yeah, back. I need, a, I need a beer. Guys, let us know in the comments below, please, the best way to cook a steak. And uh, if it's one of the ways we've cooked, let us know. But if you've got your own way of cooking a steak that we know. haven't mentioned, please let us know in the comments below. All right. Yep. Dirty steak. Well, we've got more steak to eat, boys. <laughs> Whatever your opinion, I think we can all agree that a night at camp with good mates is the best way to enjoy life. And tomorrow, we've got another cracking day ahead. On today's menu is the northern end of the old telegraph track which features the largest and most well-known crossings of the entire trip. A big day needs a breakfast to match, and Bailey's got a stellar feed going on the camper kitchen. I was going to say it may be because I've been sitting in a 47 series for the better part of two weeks, but 
You know comfort when you find it. I reckon camper trailers like this that are just so quick and easy to put up, I think it took Bailey, well, with a full setup, probably took him 20 minutes to do the whole thing, five minutes just to do the basics that I'm sitting in right now. You've got an ensuite over here. Um, one of the boys had a shower last night. I saw him sneak into there. You've got a lounge suite in here, table, You've got cooker outside. Sean knows madly playing with sausages out there, which is something he does quite often. You can just see how comfortable this bad boy is. And we are right now on the middle of the tally track. Work smarter, not harder, as far as I'm concerned. The sound of sizzling bacon soon has the sharks swimming in. And with a hot brekkie on board, everyone turns their attention to final preparations before our push to the top of the tally. And of course, the legendary tip of Cape York. How's the big girl going, Sam? Hey, mate. Yeah, really well. Yeah. So it's proving a fair bit more comfortable than the 80 did. Oh, I bet, I bet. Now, how did you get this thing ready for Cape York? We accessorised the car with all the sort of basic stuff you need to get up to remote places, um, you know, from bar work, snorkels, lights, suspension, all the stuff you need for those big sort of long touring trips. And the other best part is that the back of the car is filled with every sort of spare we could possibly need to I, keep this thing on the road. I did notice last night, mate, you pulled out a set of 200 series brake pads. Yeah. And I was like, you, you're telling me you're carrying spare brake pads in the back of this vehicle, yep. just in case they might have fit the 79, which of yep. course they didn't. Yep. But just the fact that you've got just about every single spare under the sun in the back of this vehicle. What if you've got a brand new sort of vehicle, like a 200 or a modern yep. dual cab ute, and yep. you sort of, you need a little bit of advice where to go to how to make this thing Cape York ready. Yep. What, can people just get on the yeah. phone? Yeah, you can jump online and you can shoot us an email or jump on the live chat and chat with our, we've got a whole bunch of Aussie based experts that are happy to talk your ear off about cars and four wheel drives. They're and just that kind car of thing. nuts like us. Exactly they right. They just know what to do. That, yep. That's a great thing that, to get the support you need as well because you don't want to be spending money on the wrong mods. That's you right. want the right ones. And the fact that you can build a whole car from scratch just from Spares Box, yep. one stop shop if you ask me, mate. Pretty soon camp is all packed up. We're back on the road and up ahead is our first crossing, Scrubby Creek. This one is usually clouded up and pretty hard to judge, but today it's suspiciously clear. This has not been loose for a while. It looks very different. It looks like not a lot of people are driving uh, Scrubby Creek this year. I don't year. think anyone even knows Scrubby Creek is here. Oh, I'm in. Oh, I'm in. I've got no, no control. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's how you do this. I'm closing it. Close the air conditioner. What's in here? Anything in here? Got a lot on the. Oh no! Keep it going! Keep it going, I've Captain! Got a lot of water coming in. Keep it going, Captain! Yes. <laughs> Look at the water! Oh no, dear. We've got cables in the water. Oh no, we need these. Get the doors open. Got a bit of water in there. The rest of the convoy is soon into it as well, but maybe they've got a little less water leakage. This section of the old tally is littered with creek crossings with that uniquely clear water that really you don't experience anywhere else in the country. And let me tell you, it really is as fun as it looks. Crossings aren't just for driving though. They also offer some great swimming spots, including this little gem at Sam's Creek. Spots like this are one of the few places in Cape York where you can swim completely safely. And after a few days on the track, this is the perfect place to cool off. The crossing just up here, it's called Sam's Creek. It's a little tributary of it. Not many people know about it. That waterfall flows all through the dry. And this is hands down my favourite swimming hole on the entire telly track. It's absolutely sensational. With a bit of the dust washed off, we're back into it. And up ahead is Cannibal Creek, another cracker that is a heck of a lot of fun to drive through.
What a beast! What an absolute weapon. This is unlocked. It's got standard lift in it. This is an absolute rig. Have a go with that. That's, that's 101. One of the best driving skills I can recommend, I think, is throttle control. Just getting that right will allow you to drive things like that without doing any damage to the vehicle and make it look easy as well. You don't spin those tyres, you don't lose traction. Throttle control, I reckon, is the number one thing you can do off-road. But I want to hear from you guys. Let us know in the comments below. What do you reckon the best driving tip you can give someone? If you can only give them one tip, what would it be? And the winner is going to get an EVC throttle controller. Pretty good prize if you ask me. So get commenting below. Up next is a challenge that always puts the wind up me, the ever-changing Cypress Creek. This rickety log bridge is washed away every wet season, and every year it gets rebuilt. And this time around, <laughs> it is not looking its best. It looks a little bit worse for wear. I know we always say that, but this time it's got ratchet straps on it holding some of the logs together. So I reckon the 47 will be fine. He weighs probably a couple of hundred kilos, but some of the bigger vehicles in the convoy, I reckon it's going to be... Uh, Bit on. Yeah, there'll be a bit on, but anyway, we'll see how Sean goes and we'll judge it from there, eh? Yeah. <laughs> right, mate. Beautiful. I don't feel good about this. Take it slow. This is the sketches it's, I've ever it's, seen it's this crossing. Ridiculously slow. Right? Oh, we're committed now, bro. Oh. What happened if you fell through? I don't want to talk about it. We're, right, we're on it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nearly safe on my side. I'm just wanna, I'm just I just want to gas it, hey. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, all yeah. I want to do. She's got a narrow old wheel track. I've never had oh. the guide cheese cut it before. <laughs> <laughs> That's sketchy. I don't like that. Nah, nah, nah. It's not my favourite thing to do. Yeah, I'm going to have to be guided by you. I can't see the damn thing. No, it's alright. We'll guide you, mate. Of, um... Yeah, sure. You're pretty wide. You alright? That's good. That's good. A little bit. A little bit that way. Yep, straight right. That's it. That's it, mate. Yep, you're, you're on the right line. You're on the right. Yep, yep, yep. Stop! Stop! Ah! <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. You're a bunch of dogs. The lot of you. <laughs> mate, you're going pretty good. Come <laughs> oh, hey, on, Drew. Ready, mate? Do it all over again. Oh, that was great. Okay, you're done. Yeah. Look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Front's coming off. Jokes aside, you really don't want to put your tyres wrong here. So keep a good spotter handy. That feels <laughs> terrible, eh? <laughs> Bailey's got to use some real precision here, but he's absolutely nailed it. Oh, hello. He and the camper have made it across with no dramas. Yeah, beautiful. Now, there's wide, and then there's a 200. Sambo, mate, <laughs> good luck. Oh. A little, little bit. Is that? Yep, yep, yep. Oh. She's a wide girl. Big girl. <laughs> Big girl. This is worse than gunshot, eh? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's a tyre over on each side. Yeah, you got, like, that much tyre off the bridge. A little bit this way. It's a fracco. Gentle, slow. Slow. Nice and slow, A slow. little bit left. <laughs> I can't see the logs. They're that, like, I'm that far over. Oh, I'm out. That reel yeah, is no, sketch. that's okay. Touch the left. Yep. That's it. Front's coming off now. Just stay straight. Don't turn yet. For yep, the love you're of right. God, don't turn yet. Just keep going straight. I'm glad you can't see this. Okay, now you can turn. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that was so yeah, good. You were on by the <laughs> hair on your chinny chin. She was a big girl. White knuckle, <laughs> heavy breathing. Geez, I tell you what, I was holding my breath for that one. But we're all through, and we can point the Forbies towards the pointy end of the old tally, and of course, notorious Nolan's Creek. Tell you what, one thing for me is I'm super fortunate to be doing the Cape with the boys and in a nice vehicle. I'm used to sort of roughing it up here a little bit, but one of the things that's really blown me away is the canopy and tray set up on the back of the vehicle. Just living out of that for weeks on end and driving some of this real tough stuff. Tell you what, the boys behind me at MITS have done some incredible R&D testing. 
I've been blown away at how tough this thing is. I mean, I've put it into the bank at gunshot. We're driving over some locations right now, and it's just <laughs> loving it. Yeah, mate, it's going good. This is our um, Evo 2 design, and we're up here doing all the testing on it. We've just done, uh, this is eight weeks for me on the road in the big cruiser, and that car with Graham into Kimberley as well. And the things are holding together nicely, especially up here with these cars. I remember when I was in your workshop a couple of weeks ago, we were chatting about the new design with, you essentially put, in essence, a body mount on your canopy, didn't you? So it's kind of like having it rubber mounted to the tray. Yeah, mate. So the idea is we've got a good tray structure and we've got a really good platform to work off and that's going to give you a lot of integrity in your canopy. But then we've got a little body mount that we've designed up with the guys at Fulcrum there to go between the canopy and the tray and that allows the canopy to just have that little bit of movement. You know, you don't want your 12 volt coming loose, you don't want your draw runners to wear out and you, you can see now just driving along it's pretty rough. And speaking of that tray, <laughs> I stuck my head under when this tray went on and um, I was looking at, so you've pretty much just interlocked the design of the tray, hey, that would give it a fair bit of strength on this sort of stuff as, as well. We've gone to an interlocking like sheet design, so it's all notched and folded on our CNC gear. And um, we've gone away from a lot of extrusion because you can't get a full weld around the extrusion. You're only getting one sort of edge. You know, they're strong, but now they're even stronger. Got to be happy with that. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, if we can handle the way Graham drives and me as well, I'll tell you what, I reckon this canopy's uh, going to stand the test of time on the Mighty D-Max. Up ahead, it's a penultimate crossing of the track, Logan's Creek. It's long and deep, and the only technique here is to just send it. Here we go, lads. <laughs> yes! Holy heck! Oh! Loves it. Just, that's a deep crossing, though, isn't it? It's a very deep crossing. Feel yes. the bottom. She's just a Look at her go. Look at her go, though. She's... Whoa! Yes! Lots of water in here. A lot of water in here. A lot of water. Whoa, that's deep. Oh, how good's that? <laughs> That's the go. Yeah. That was gnarly. How good, mate? Thank you. That's the go. Yeah. Easy, mate. Easy. See how the big 200 goes and the old it's up the bonnet. Oh, it's just got so much power. Loves it. Happy yeah. day. <laughs> Took most of the river with you. <laughs> With Logan's done and dusted, there's just one more crossing between us and the end of the track. And this one has a place in four wheel drive history. Of course, I'm talking about Nolans, a treacherous little stretch of water that has claimed hundreds of four wheel drives over the years and ended the adventures of many visitors. Like much of the tally, it changes from year to year and checking out your planned route is an absolute must. Boys, well, you're nearly it. underwater oh, there. No, <laughs> you stand on I make, yeah, I make it, it, it's SPTB days. I make it look a lot deeper than it is, but it's pretty deep. Pretty deep this year and, and soft. very soft sand. Yeah. So already we'll hear a few stories that few vehicles being bogged here mm -hmm. going down yesterday. One bloke over there had to take his injectors out yesterday. Oh, last don't night, say so. that. Oh, don't at least on the two H, that's about a three minute job. It's <laughs> <laughs> not too bad. But look, I don't want to get to that stage. Nah, ideally I might let a bit of uh, pressure out of those tyres. Yeah. I reckon we go flat. Also, make sure you take your swag out. Yeah. That's an important one. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Swag, yep. clothes bag, everything else can get wet. Yeah. <laughs> <Get wet. laughs> That's fine. I'm taking the Goodyear Duratrax down really low, 14 psi, so we can bag those tyres out as much as possible. When you're running a stock rig, some quality tyres are absolutely essential, and these aggressive all terrains from Goodyear have really helped us keep up with the convoy. The next trick is to deal with the farm truck's fan, and for that, we're literally tying it in place. Righto, that's all tied up now. Now that'll prevent the fan from spinning. It'll just slip on that viscous clutch and um, it's not in the way of the belts or anything like that. So should be good to get through Nolan's and hopefully we don't get stuck. I've got my clothes bag on the roof though, just to be sure. And the swag's up nice and high. We've got nothing valuable down low. And you've got a lifesaver on board. <laughs> I'm ready to jump out at a moment's notice. Let's give this a go, eh? Yep.
Now it's important to get prepared before you come into this. I'm expecting to get water in through the doors and maybe go down on the chassis rail. So we're going to get a static rope connected to a couple of kinetic ropes. And that way, that if I do go down, Jocko or someone will be able to just quickly hook me on and then we'll be able to tow it out for the camera car. So nice quick recoveries is the name of the game. And a recovery gear, a wash as well. Oh, look at that. How good's that, eh? Here we go. Is it Nolan's? Nolan's. Oh, it looks deep already. It's deep. Whoa! Whoa! A lot of water coming in. A lot in. of water coming in. Right up. Right up and out. You beauty! And <laughs> would you look at that? The farm truck has absolutely nailed it. Yeah, boy! Oh! <laughs> A little bit. Not too bad, though. Nah. That preparation's your brain. All right. <laughs> Well, is there anything the old farm truck can't do, mate? I don't think so, mate. It's just an absolute rig. It's, it's, yep. it's war talent and me and Graham combined. This, this thing just, <laughs> it just goes. The preparation yep. was the key, I think, I in, think this, so. in this case. You know, nice and deep. Nice and slow. It, it went up over the bonnet. I thought, oh, if it gets any deeper, we're in we're trouble. Off, but nope. as long as that snorkel's up and it's sucking air. She just chugged on through. Yeah. Real easy. All Let's right. get that fan free and drive to the tip. Righto. Time to tackle Nolan's in the nicest car. I've ever driven in Cape York. Let's see how we go. Straight through. Absolutely loves it. What a rig! How good's that? Nice job. Happy days. No water in here. Well done, mate. Sure, you've heard lots of people say it before, but if you're ever up here, the trick with Nolan's low tire pressure idle in because it's so deep so quick if you hit that water fast it basically just stops your vehicle does can, can do damage and then you just start floating okay let's see how the heavier rigs go oh, oh, that's deep. follow my voice yeah. Yeah. big timbo yeah, yeah, buddy. Good work, man. You can Good see work. how you just go straight yeah, down yeah, and yeah. you rev it up. And yep, yep, it is. If you rev, oh, right. Yep. Oh, that, that was a mellow one. Well done, mate. Nolan's done it before, but this year is a lot bloody deeper. But we're going to nose on in, nice and steady. With every vehicle going through, the sand under Nolan's gets softer and softer. And I tell you, it nearly catches Bailey out. I think he's got it. Oh, hang about. Gently, gently. Gently, gently. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Camper trailer through Nolans. There wasn't. <laughs> That's Nolans. Done and dusted. If he'd given that some boot then and panicked, would have gone down 100%. All right, we've just got the big 200. Loves it. Nolan's what? Loves it. Power, big mud terrains. Sambo makes it look easy. Outstanding. Nolan's who? Outstanding. Let's celebrate with a little bit of champagne. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! How good? <laughs> and that, folks, is the old telly. One of the finest tracks in Australia. Next stop for us, the tip of Cape York. What do you reckon, mate? Big farm truck, old telly, big tick. 10 years up the telly, mate. It's been an absolute bloody privilege to have done it with you and to celebrate 10 years in this old girl. I know, I I've know. I've a little bit of me in here. I reckon there'll be a bit I, of me in here. I think so. <laughs> I mean, I've absolutely loved this trip. Not yep. just because, you know, it's our 10th trip and we're taking the farm yep. truck up, but we've done it really basic. And it goes yep. to show that you can have just as much fun with the bare, bare basics. I'm going to go out there and say something. Yeah. I reckon I've had more fun. Yeah. Having the bare basics I'm, on this trip. I'm not surprised. Yeah. It's, it's just it. been an absolute hoot. You yeah. don't care if your feet get wet inside the car and you know, <laughs> it's still a little bit of sand inside your swag yep. and yep. all that sort of stuff. It's just, it's been a very memorable trip. Tim, your first time, you and Tones, mate, up in Cape York. It's been an absolute cracker. Couldn't ask for a better time and I can't wait for the next couple of weeks as well. It's been really good so far. And Tones, hope you've enjoyed the ride, mate. Yeah, I've been very fortunate, mate. Had a a uh, great driver, a bit of a co-pilot. Looking forward to the next couple of weeks, mate, see where that takes us. That's a go, mate. And Bailey, 
second time down gunshot, I, I won't lie to you mate, I, I was a bit worried for you. I thought you are going to have a rooftop tent up the end of this trip because that camper would have been on your roof, but you did remarkably well mate, piloted that thing around some obstacles that most people would never dream of taking a camper trailer through. Yeah mate, it was definitely nerve wracking, and uh, but I'll tell you what, I'll do it again, that's for sure. Well mate, you handled it like an absolute boss and um, it's been good having you along, I won't lie mate, after doing it pretty rough in the 47 to have a kitchen to come back to at camp. Well mate, you can sign up for next year if you like. And Sam, mate, your first time doing Cape York in absolute comfort, the big 200, there is nothing that held that vehicle back. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, Well, it was almost too wide for gunshot there, but I'm glad we ended up poking its nose down and having a rally. And, uh, well, it's proven a heap more comfortable than the 80 Series did a couple of years ago. So, I've been a happy boy. No, it's been good, mate. It's been good to have the Land Cruiser front and rear of this convoy. It's just given everyone else in the convoy a stack of confidence. Boys in the middle of this Land Cruiser sandwich can't take confidence from that. <laughs> then God help them. <laughs> The last stop on the way north is the crossing of the Jardine Ferry, virtually the only way to make it to Bamaga and the final run to the tip. But at last, we're here, the most northerly point of the Australian continent and one of the most special locations in the country. What a perfect way to finish this adventure. Well, boys, I've got to say, I didn't know we were going to make it. Oh. No. I didn't know. Don't you got go so much red dust on you. <laughs> and here we are at the tip right now um, in the old 47. What makes this really special is 10 years for us. Yep. It's been at least five for you, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's four or five, yeah, now. There yep. you go, eh? And for a couple of first timers as well. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you sit in the equation. Doesn't just coming make... up here, whether it's your 10th time or your first time. 20th time, doesn't Beautiful matter. Part of the world. Absolute ball, mate. I've had such a good time with this one. It's been my favourite trip so far. Of all the 10 that I've done up here, this one here is going to stand out for me. Now, one thing I just did want to mention here, folks. Sean and I have done this trip, I'm not going to say hard, but we've taken two swags, a couple of cans of baked beans, some steaks and some beers. Our spotlights don't work. We've got just about nothing left in the fridge. Folks, what is your excuse? Why are you not planning a Cape trip? Because I tell you what, you don't need much to come up here and have an absolute ball. I reckon, folks, we get the photos done, we get back up over this hill, down to Loyalty Beach, oh. crack a cold beer, sun yep. setting. Oh, Beautiful. It's, just, it's almost Beautiful. romantic, folks. I really hope that one day you get the chance to stand right here and go like that. Touch that sign right there, because this is the tip. Cape York doesn't get much better. Well done, boys. You! Yeah, well done. Catch us, guys. We hope you've enjoyed this adventure as much as we have, but stick around, because the outtakes are coming up. But first, let's take a look at some of the gear that made this trip possible. Well, now's a part of the show where we'll go through a couple of the bits of equipment that have really, you know, excelled on this trip. I mean, this 100%. trip has been a tough trip. You go yep. to Cape York and do the old telly. I mean, it's really a proving ground for some of the best products in the industry. Yep. Mate. I, want to, I want to kick off with a couple, mate. And, and this one's more of a service that will lead to getting the right bits for your four-wheel drive. I'm talking about spares box, oh, mate, yeah. because when you come onto a trip like this, you need to take your own spares. You need to be fully self-sufficient, and spares box is the place to go, mate. Not just for the spares you need, mm -hmm. but also if you want to build your car ready for Cape York, it's a one-stop shop. I like the fact that it's so darn easy. Don't call me lazy, because I'm I sort of am. <laughs> but I like the fact that I can just jump online before coming on a trip like this. We all do it. Everybody here, the crew, everyone has done it. Yep. And just grab those vital bits and pieces, hoses, uh, you know, bits and you know, everything you need for your exactly car. Exactly right. There's been a, f a few bush mechanics on this trip, and uh -huh. just it's good to know that we've got the spares, we've got the tools yep. to get through this trip, mate. Now, look, I'm going to let you in on a bit of a secret, folks. Whilst I've been acting all tough, driving in here with Sean O, I it's have available, actually, <laughs> slightly <laughs> tough, I have actually been sharing the Mitz canopy and tray package with Jock up the back there. Primarily because it's just so darn comfortable. I'm not gonna lie, mate. You know, when we get through the deep water crossings, guess where I put my bag? Straight Yeah, in, it's all in the back of there. Straight in the canopy, mate, because yeah. I know that it doesn't leak, it doesn't let dust <laughs> in, it's the safest place. I've yep. tried a few other places, and uh, let's well, just say it hasn't been, <laughs> hasn't been favorable. Absolutely pear-shaped. No, look, it's, it's just fantastic to have it. We've, we've had those, you know, the package with us for some time now. And my trust is just in it. Look, I'm going to say something, mate, and you'll agree with this one. Go, go, go. You know, we've been roughing it, like you've said before, yeah, mate. Yeah, we have. But when you get to camp, it's sometimes nice just to be able to have a place to cook. I know, A little bit of shelter. I know it's actually say. rained on this trip a couple of times. It's, it's weird. just quite unseasonable for Cape York. Yep. I'm talking about the Maverick yep. um, camper trailer, mate, yep. because when that's set up, 
you know, we've got the awning. It's yep. got even got the little ensuite on the back. I mean, yeah, I've been in there. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> and, you know, just to wake up and you know, like, oh, I've got to get my camping gear out. There's yep. a kitchen set up. You can so go easy. cook breakfast. Yep. I mean, the, the thing is an absolute Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, it's driven some of the toughest tracks up here. I was about to say that it nearly flipped over the top onto the car, <laughs> going down. It went down gunshot, and then that night. We cooked dinner on I the darn I thought thing. to myself, I thought, if the drawers even open on this camera trail, I'll be stoked. we're doing well. I'll be stoked. But it's just handled everything that's been thrown at it, and it's come back for more. Uh, so in terms of comfort, I mean, we haven't gone astray. We can say that we've been all rough and tough in the I old know, 47, but, but we lean on the other blokes, that's for very sure. Very heavily, very heavily, <laughs> folks. Hope you enjoyed this episode. It's a few little behind the scenes bits and pieces, the gear we've used on this trip. For now, though, you need to put some more wood on that fire because that is a city boy fire. It's, not, go, it's not going well, mate. It's terrible. I'll, I'll tell you what, if you want to see a couple of outtakes, just make sure you stick around because, I mean, we got a little bit top end crazy, I reckon. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Catch us next time. All right, you can put this in the outtakes, but it's, I'm explaining, I chew my tongue when I'm concentrating. It's, it's not a thing I can control. You're obtuse. Oh. Pull me up, Bailey. <laughs> oh, well, with that, boys, what do you reckon? Can? Yeah, mate, lad. <laughs> Here we go. First man ever to juggle from Cypress Bridge. This has been in the 47, unfortunately. <laughs> right, next. Did Just did. <laughs> we had other. I got you other salt. Hello. That is one of. The, I mean, you didn't expect it. Last year it wasn't like this at all, and yet this year we come up here and conditions have changed considerably. I mean, I blame El Nino. What was that? I don't know how to back the boat up easily. Two engines, Graham. I just think it's good to be able to come up here with a young bloke like yourself and just show you the ropes in a more remote location and just uh, teach you what it's like. Sir. That's his bag. <laughs> he's in the, he's my nurse. <laughs> <laughs> he fixed me. Hi. I have, a, I have a wound. Did he give you a lolly? Yeah, hey, come chop a chop. I'll give you a lolly later. I find it better to turn around and look at the way you're going and just have the two sticks on each hand as you're looking. It makes it a lot easier. He's a big boy. <laughs> big boy. Oh, you get bigger God. in some jobs, eh? He really does. Okay, right. He's on boots. I'm in thongs. He's in boots. I've got public clean. Bet you didn't know this, but the old telly truck was actually named after Lady Gaga's song Telephone. Don't you spell me, then. It's gross. <laughs> You know, a little known fact, it was founded by Lady Gaga about 400 years ago, so, you know, a bit of trivia for you. Oh, hang on, you've got, he's oh, got, he's got, got his dried peaches here, they're going to yeah. get wet. Quick have a cashew. All right. Because this is the last chance they're going to be dry. Put them up there and I'll have a quick cashew. Hey, Tim, it's Barry, I'll be guiding you on this one, so you'll be all sweet. <laughs> 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 Bobby vehicles. This goes to show, mate, you can take the pilot out of the... Out of the plane, mate, but the <laughs> plane can't come out of the pilot. The key is, the key is what a, a wise old man taught me. No, this is, this is important. This is important. See you later, folks. It's important. <laughs> <laughs>